Okay, this is a how-to video on using post failover scripting and how it can be used to remount Linux mounts post failover and how you can automate the complete end-to-end -end failover of an access zone, the smart connect zones, unmount remount, all from within on a dial. So look at this slide just to recap what happens during failover. You've got dual delegation configured. You've got two clusters replicating. Eyeglass is now monitoring both of these clusters. So what happens during the failover? So these are the steps that are gonna happen. You can run a pre-script shutdown applications. We won't go through that in this video. You will fill over the smart connect zones, which means adding them to the DR cluster, disabling them on the source cluster, do all the SPN management, the data operations, sync, failover, all the sync IQ, sync IQ steps basically. Shares and exports are pre-synced, so the export in this case is already on the other cluster, defined as it was on the production cluster. Quotas failover, it's create and a delete. And then the post failover script, which is what we're gonna focus on here, and we're gonna use this specifically for a remount. Because the FQDN or Smart Connect Zone is the same, we can easily do an unmount remount because the DNS step is removed with dual delegation. So let's take a look at how this works, how it's configured, and what it looks like when we run a quick demo. So let's go over to iGlass, and we're gonna be working with the data zone. Currently it's in an okay state for failover. We've got three policies. Let's just take a quick look at the dual delegation configuration. up user data and then we run a test with my export mount path. It's currently resolving to a dot one ten int address. If I look at my map, it says that user data is going to fail over from this subnet to this subnet and that's what's going to happen during failover. So we want our script to basically remount at the right time when the, the cluster two has the user data.db1.test namespace failover. So to do that, we're going to need to enable a script in the script engine. So I've got a script that I've added called run remount.sh. You can use any language to do this, but you can see it's not very long. So let's just step through it. First thing is we just want to echo out the source cluster into the output of the script as it runs. We also want the zone data because we're going to do an if zone equals data, then run this particular set of commands. So here we're going to see who the user is that's running the script. We'll exit that out to the script or echo it out. Here's what we're doing. We basically echo the zone data that iGlass populates into this variable, and we're going to pass it through grep, and we're going to search for this string. And this string is the name of the zone data. And so we're going to find it. And if we do find it, we're going to say found the zone, then we're going to uh, call SSH, and I've previous, previously set up keyless SSH access to this remote host, so I won't go through that right now. But basically, we're going to run SSH, and we're going to request that the remount.sh command run. I'm running this as root. You wouldn't want to do this. You'd probably want to use a sudo command on the remote host, but for simplicity, I'm just showing this as an example. The output of whatever that command does is captured and then output to the failover log because we want to see what happened during the failover. If we don't find the zone called data, then basically didn't find the zone. So it can fail over other zones and this script logic will run but then not actually execute and that's what we want to have happen. If I have more than one zone, I can just cut and paste this section and create more if else. Very, bit, very basic script. I can test it, but it's easier just to show it in, in, in action so we'll do that in just a second let's go over to my Linux host so if I type um, the output of this command we can see here what the script is doing it's doing a simple unmount dash FL the name of the mount mount dash a which will reread the FS tab file and basically re 
up, look up the namespace user data one db one test, and we just exit with um, outputting the mount command so that we can verify in our failover log that in fact it did mount with the correct IP address. Okay, let's put all these pieces together and do an end-to-end -end failover. So we're going to be working with the zone called data. It's currently in a failover state, so we're actually going to be doing a failback, but the process is the same. The export's mounting user data.av1.test, and that's what's going to fail over with the script during the failover, and it's going to move this smart connect zone from one cluster to another. We've enabled the script. Here it is here. Remote.sh will run when access zones are failed over. You can see we can turn this on for all the failover options that we have. We do include pre-failover scripting as well. So you could do things like shut down the application, unmount, failover, then remount. So many options for doing a complete end-to-end -end failover. Let's go ahead and start the failover. Cluster that owns it. Check for open files. Run, and we'll go ahead and start. So let's go look at the Linux host while that's starting to sync the data. I'll do MS lookup. It's resolving to the dot one eleven address. That's also the address that's currently mounted to that export. So we need. DNS to be switched so that the resolution now is the other cluster, and we should get a different IP address back, and the file system needs to be writable. So Augustus ensures this all happens in the right sequence. So checking on the failover, we can see the first few steps are done, which is run the three policies, look for config changes to sync, so we'll let that finish. All of this is on our documentation site, including the scripts that were used to do this. So we'll just go there now while we're waiting. We also included how to do SSH-less uh, no password login. This, of course, you'd have to do in advance. I've already done that, but the instructions for doing that to allow Oglass to remotely log into a remote machine without a password, it's just easier than trying to pass passwords into a script or store passwords insecurely. So we do recommend that you do this for remote execution. Um, everything I've done is, is online. You can actually use all the sample scripts. They're all here. This video is designed to help you uh, see it, understand what's happening. So that's just checking in on our log. So DNS section is now done. So if we take a look at our Linux host, DNS lookup again. We're getting a different IP, which means the dual delegation has now kicked in through failover. We're now resolving off the other cluster to a different address, but we can't mount it yet because it's not read write. So at this stage in the failover, um, the name resolution portion is done. This is what's required so that when the unmount remount occurs, it's going to resolve to the right cluster at the right time. The remaining steps that are being executed fill over the schedules, make writable. You can see that's happening here. Resync prep, that's in the failback logic on the cluster. And once all three policies are processed, then it will proceed to the post failover scripting section. You can see that here. We've completed, completed the actual failover. We don't want to run any of the post failover logic here. Another thing that's important is that the scripts are designed to capture the output. And if you generate an error code that's non-zero in scripts, it will flag the entire failover job as failed. So we can control the whole failover status in iGlass from the scripts as well, including all the output from the script. So if something doesn't go right, you can, of course, look at the log to see what portion of the log did or did not succeed. The last policy is getting resync prep to proceed. So this, is, of course, is an example. Um, if you have per policy or more than one host, you just duplicate this logic 
or you could build it into a loop. There's many ways to do this. This is a very simple, easy way to understand the concept of running a script remotely and doing that from within IDOC. While this video was designed for scripting, we do include API support, which means if you call a builder through the API, most builder scripts will execute as well. So now the post builder section is running. And that's good. So if we take a look at our log now, we can see that the script started to execute. It outputs the things that we'd asked it to do. It says found the zone. So it knows this is the right zone to run the logic for. It then runs the script remotely on the host. And that host then echoes it back. And we can see the results here. It's now switched to the 110 address, which is good. And a return code of zero, which means success. And it's complete. So we're finished with the check mark, meaning everything succeeded. So now if we go to our Linux host, hit mount, we can see that we've switched. There's my data directory, and this, of course, should be very long. And it is. And that's it. So this hopefully gives you an end-to-end -end view of how you do scripting, how you can remotely execute commands on remote hosts, and integrate the echo or the output of those commands back into your build of the logs. Pretty straightforward. Hopefully this video helps you out. Thanks for watching.